Hi Richard, it's really nice to see you here today. Uh, firstly, what do you want to say about the uh, Binance Blockchain Week in Istanbul here? Uh, what makes uh, it crucial for the ecosystem uh, together at this juncture? Well, thanks for having me back. Uh, it's, a, it's a great pleasure to be in this beautiful <laughs> city of Istanbul. We decided to host this here, a Binance Blockchain Week, which is our landmark event. We have many thousands on crowd, yeah. as you can see, <laughs> and many more thousands, if not millions, joining us virtually. And we just showcase our latest yeah. innovation, the Binance Web3 Wallet, and which is to allow more users to navigate Web3 with ease, allow them to self-customize their wallet, and that's to really continue to push towards the next billion users for ourselves. So secondly, uh, Binance has declared an ambitious strategy to onboard next billion users. Uh, I want to ask something about it. What does the strategic plan to reach this goal uh, entail? Uh, what measures need to be taken to bolster the adoption of cryptocurrency? Well, if we look at the past three to five years, the direction of travel is very clear. From three to five years ago, where a lot of institutions say that, you know, this is a passing fad, crypto, you will not stay. <laughs> to now, you have the likes of so BlackRock, big. Fidelity, Chelsea. Everybody is in this game pushing with ETF launch, pushing with new products in this space. That's a big positive. That's going to bring a lot more new investors. That's going to bring the next billion of users into this space. Couple with that, you are seeing a lot of, a lot of regulators now mm -hmm. uh, really spending time, resources, effort to understand this sector, uh -huh. coming up with framework to regulate this sector. And that will instill more trust into the sector. And that will really continue to bring about mass adoption for crypto. So we're, we're, we are very bullish. We are working around the world with many regulators. We now are the most licensed crypto exchange globally, right? So we have 18 regulatory approval throughout the world from different parts of Europe to Asia Pacific, yeah. to Middle East, to uh, the CIS region, to Latin America. So we will continue to push ahead, work very closely with local partners, work very closely with regulators to continue to support crypto adoption and deployment. Okay, thanks. Uh, and next question about more globally. Uh, global economy has their serious problems. There is wars and serious inflation problem uh, everywhere. Uh, how does Binance manage in this uncertain situation? And uh, how do you uh, plan it to keep growing? What's your strategy? Well, firstly, I think our heart and sympathy go out, goes out to everyone that's affected by all this unrest. We hope that any conflict will be resolved very quickly and move on with normal life, right? But we continue to be focused on our central mission, mm -hmm. which is to empower every individual to achieve their own financial freedom. Yeah. And that's very important in many different parts of the world. If you look at it, especially in places where financial inclusion is low, right? I've been to many parts of the world where financial inclusion is only between 10 to 20%, meaning a large part of the population are shut out, are shut out from the financial system because it's very costly, yeah. the financial system. Uh, if you try to do a remittance, if you try to do a payment, it is into 10%. The fees are extremely high. You, you want to remit money to your loved ones overseas. It takes two days <laughs> at 10% yeah. of the cost, for instance. And that's where we see crypto in action in all these different parts of the world, right? You can remit money, you can make payment at a fraction of the cost of what is charged by traditional financial services sector. And that actually benefits a lot of life. So we are, we are committed to that mission to try to bring about financial freedom. And that's where we are trying to push forth with crypto adoption. Yeah. Thanks for your answer. Uh, I want to say uh, about some regulation problems uh, because it's a bit mess worldwide. Everywhere has some problems uh, about cryptocurrency regulations. Uh, and how do you think uh, the current regulatory environment and what approach should be taken to maintain a delicate uh, balance between uh, regulation and encouragement uh, of innovation? Yeah, so uh, that is very, very important, right? So the best regulations are what we call smart regulations. Yeah. The smart regulations don't only focus on one dimension, which is the risk dimension, mm -hmm. right? So it focuses on two dimensions, which is how do you manage risks mm -hmm. in a proportionate manner by the same time, how do you support the innovation and growth? And how do you bring about the talent to building the ecosystem to support growth? And many countries around the world have done that extremely well, right? So from very early on within Asia Pacific, you have uh, Japan flying that flag to say, I want to be a crypto hub. Then subsequently Singapore, 
yeah. and Hong Kong. Hong Kong. And yeah. that's, uh, and Hong Kong now has uh, pushed forth with a yeah. crypto ETF. But you see that being replicated all around the world with smart regulations. You have in Middle East, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Bahrain, and we see that throughout the world. So you have very good policy makers, legislators, regulators continue to understand this industry and come up with what's proportionate. Compared to three or five years ago, today is so much better, right? Because there's much more clarity that's given. The regulators in Europe has come up with Mika, which is transformational in many sense. Is it the regulation? Well, it is, it is a transparent regulation yeah. and it allows you to have one license to offer your services yeah. to like 27 yeah. different countries yeah. uh, di in, within Europe. So we are very supportive of that and we have got those efforts. And we, we need a lot more of this right, throughout the world. Having said that, one of the key challenges that continue to face us is lack of harmonization yeah. of regulations. Some regulate them as securities, some regulate them as commodities, yeah. others <laughs> think it's a digital payment token, and then some say, oh no, it's a very unique class, come out with definition of virtual assets. So all this inconsistency of treatment cause problems for global deployment, like exchange yeah. by ourselves, sure. right? So that is still a big challenge. We hope for greater harmonization of standards globally that make life easier for global deployment. Uh, so Richard, what about Turkey? Uh, what is Binance's, uh, Binance Global's uh, assassination and your personal assassination about Turkish market here? Because we have a very dynamic uh, market here for cryptocurrency and very uh, much younger generation interested in. And also we have a serious inflation problem too. Uh, that helps too. Uh, what are you thinking about Turkey? Well, Turkey is a very important market for us. I mean, other than being a beautiful country. Yeah. Uh, the reason why we hold our flagship event, Finance Blockchain Week in Turkey, is because of that. It's yeah. a very important market. And if you look at the unique characteristics of Turkey, right? It has embraced digital assets in general. Yeah. So from three years ago, about 16% of Turkish residents hold digital assets. Today, that has risen very sharply to 40%, right? Fast, right? <laughs> and that trend will continue. Mm -hmm. It's because we want to support that movement that we are here. And transaction volume uh, of digital assets in Turkey ranks as one of the highest in the world, surpassing many of the global economies. And that is uh, something that we should applaud uh, the Turkish users on. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and last question. Uh, what is your uh, projections or, ex uh, or expectations? Uh, for the 2024, for the next year? I don't have a crystal ball, so don't ask me what the price of Bitcoin <laughs> okay. is. But uh, I'm very bullish of this sector mm -hmm. for the few reasons I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Firstly, institutional adoption with all the global financial institutions coming onto the bandwagon. They are going to bring in a new, lot more new products, a lot more new investors into this space. Regulations will instill trust among users, helping up to bring about mass deployment and adoption. So those two factors, and next year we have a Bitcoin halving, <laughs> right? So we are all looking forward to it, towards that. But a lot more projects are being built. A lot of real use cases are being done. Uh, and those will be transformational in terms of how they solve some of today's problems, right? be it in terms of payment, remittance, how we reimagine the future of finance. So I'm very bullish. I mean, you see from the energy of this crowd, the, the projects that we have showcased, I think you get a sense of that. Uh, Richard, thanks for your answer and for your time. Uh, so again, it's really nice to see you here. Thanks. Thank you. It's a real pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.